Hi, I'm Dustin Mason at Performance Lexus in St. Catharines. And today, we're gonna answer the question, which hybrid is right for you? The 2023 UX Hybrid or the all new 2023 Toyota Prius? Before we get into the video, make sure you hit subscribe so you can see all of our Lexus and other vehicle related content as we have a lot of exciting stuff planned for soon. Uh, okay, so the UX250H and the Prius have never been more similar and I do wanna answer the question for you, which one is right for you? Because there are some very big differences. But let's look at the new Toyota Prius first. The first thing you'll notice is that it doesn't look like a Prius or at least the Prius you might remember from previous generations. In the front, we have a very, very sleek and modern design with some headlights that sort of wrap around the body, which I haven't seen in a whole lot of cars. Usually the headlights are really, you know, conjoined to one area and then sometimes, you know, uh, it'll spill into the body work a little bit, but this time it wrapping around with that daytime running light is really, really gorgeous. And then when you look at the front end as a whole, it does look very electric vehicle-like. It, it really has that EV look to it um, with you know, some really sleek lines, a very narrow opening towards the bottom, uh, and overall just a great design that like I said, you wouldn't see in, in previous generations. So looking at the front end of the Lexus UX250H, we do have the very recognizable Lexus front grille. It's the new version of the spindle grille. Now, the UX we're looking at today is the luxury package, not the S4 package. So this is the luxury grille. We see lots of different shapes there. A lot of them are different from each other, but it all really makes that front grille opening flow well together. We have a little bit of chrome at the bottom there, some parking sensors, and even some headlight washers, which I'm very glad they haven't gotten rid of yet. And I've said that in other videos, but I do really like that. Uh, and a nice daytime running light above it. An interesting thing about the UX that I didn't personally know until I saw a YouTube video by a gentleman, I think his page is called Automotive Press or something like that, but he went over the UX with a fine tooth comb and the UX is the entry level price point to the Lexus lineup. And he went over it with a fine tooth comb and really showed me that the, the build quality of this vehicle surpasses many other vehicles, not only in the Lexus lineup, but in the, the, the luxury market as a whole, which gave me a new appreciation for the UX, the variances between body panels, the quality of the paint, and also the build quality of the interior really does, you know, about like a, a higher priced vehicle. So that's something I always think about when I'm looking at, you know, the UX. Now, a comparison of the front ends of these two cars, the Lexus, in my opinion, a little bit classier, but, the front end of that Prius is super modern, super sleek, super stylish. I know I use super a lot, but I, I think it's a super car. So it just depends kind of uh, what, what you're going for. You know, sleek, stylish, and new, or kind of classy and a little more timeless, I think. So taking a look at the side profile, uh, you'll notice it has a really sort of interesting roof line where it still kind of has a little bit of that wedge shape, really goes down into a bit of a point. And then towards the rear, it flows a little smoother and has that little bit of wagon hatchback shape to it. Now, couple Easter eggs on this car, and this is one of my favorite things about the Prius, is that overall, the engineering and the design language of it is just fun. There's Easter eggs everywhere on this car. There's all these little cool, quirky things about it. And I think the Prius buyer has always really appreciated those. The first one to notice is right here on this A pillar. There's a hidden word and it says Prius there. Again, the best thing about the car industry is, you know, brands can do things that don't serve a purpose other than just being like funny or cool. And I love that. And I love that brands like Toyota are starting to really lean into that. Uh, so it does say Prius right here on, uh, on the A pillar for no reason other than it being cool. So another thing is when we go to the back door, we'll notice the handle is redesigned now and is up kind of in that other pillar as we can see. And it is an electronic hatch. So all you do is you just squeeze it and it opens up, uh, opens up the latch. There is a manual override, of course, and that is just this little space right here. You could jam your finger in there and, uh, and, and open it in the event of, uh, you know, having a dead battery or something like that. 
But overall, the styling has improved a great deal. And we even have these piano black finished um, fender flares, which just kind of dress it up a little bit. The side profile of the UX is very different from the Prius. What you'll notice is it definitely is a taller vehicle. So we have that side profile kind of stretch out, get a little bit taller, and then instead of sleeking down in you know that very elongated hatchback design, it more squares off like a hatchback. So you know, I guess I guess the best way to describe it is you know, a little bit more SUV and a little bit less wagon. Uh, so again, kind of to each their own, but that is the vibe that the UX gives off is it is a little bit taller than the Prius. It is a little bit wider than the Prius and it's not quite as long. So that's why it kind of looks more like a mini SUV. In fact, a lot of guests come into the showroom expecting the UX to be a lot bigger than it actually is because of the way it looks, the way it's designed and the way the pictures on the website look, it makes it look like you know, a bigger SUV than it really is. When in actual fact, it's uh, it's very small when it comes to that stuff. So, um, you know, very tall setup, nice height to get in and out of. Uh, and also we have the painted fender flares, which is nice to see. And they're a bit more aggressive than the Prius as well. You can see they really do kind of come off the body, kind of like more uh, an all wheel drive off-road machine, uh, where the Prius is, it's more like a decoration than anything else. So as we get to the rear of the UX, the best part is of course the taillights. The UX was one of the first cars in the lineup to give us that full back taillight that you know starts off really wide, gets super thin in the middle and then widens up again on the other side. I think it's a really classy look. I think it's very simple, elegant, you know, not too over the top uh, and just overall, you know, does the trick. We do have a exposed wiper at the bottom. Uh, some of our SUVs, you know, have them hidden in the top like the RX. The hatch opens quite quickly uh, and inside, there's not a whole ton of space, but in this segment, it's about similar to, you know, what you see from BMW, Audi, Mercedes for the same size vehicle. It is a good height to be able to load stuff into. Could you fit golf clubs? Probably not without folding down the rear seat. So just keep that in mind. You would want to fold down those rear seats for anything larger than, you know, golf clubs or bigger type thing. Uh, but for your groceries, for just, you know, generic shopping, it's going to do the trick. It's easy to load in and out of, and you do always have the option of folding down the seats. So not the end of the world there. And for, you know, a very fuel efficient small hatchback, uh, I, think, I think people purchasing this vehicle know what they need and what they want. And, uh, won't be super surprised by that. The back of the Prius follows that same vibe that we saw in the front with super sleek, very modern looking. In fact, probably the back end of this is my favorite part about the car so far. I think it looks a little bit exotic. I like how it rounds off uh, very wide um, kind of body shapes there. The taillight actually kind of similar to the UX 250H. Um, maybe it's just the, the Toyota spin on it, I would say, but it still goes from one side all the way to the other. Interesting enough, the Toyota badge is now almost kind of hidden. It's, it's not quite as prominent as on other vehicles and it almost looks like a sticker when you get up close to it, but it's not, it's in there. It just has, you know, clear over it. And instead the Prius, you know, nameplate is now massive and takes up the whole back. In fact, it reminds me of what Lexus has done with their new nameplate and how it says L-E-X-U-S. Prius has kind of branded themselves like that, which is very interesting. I'm gonna pay attention to that in years coming to see, you know, is Prius gonna be its own, you know, sub-brand? I don't know, I'm just saying. That's kind of what it looks like to be marketed by. Also, we have this HEV logo here, which, is new, that could be part of that future proofing for the fact that there are gonna be so many plug-in vehicles on the road. And I don't know, maybe maybe that's just, again, its own little branding, uh, which is really interesting. Um, I told you there's lots of Easter eggs. And here's another one. So on the back, in the heating elements in that back windshield, we actually see the heating elements spell the word Prius in the bottom right corner, which is interesting. Um, again, just for fun. Uh, to open this up, this one is the XLE, so you have to open it up manually. There's another Easter egg. Already, we're already in the truck and there's another Easter egg. Right here, it says Hybrid Reborn, and I did notice that branding somewhere else in the vehicle, but I'll sh maybe I'll show you later if I remember where I saw it. But there is that's on the right side. There is none on the left side, so again, that's just like a little 
little Easter egg on the one side. Um, okay, trunk space, bigger than the UX, a little bit lower in terms of height, but definitely longer. It seems to be a little bit wider as well in the trunk, which, you know, I thought the UX said that, you know, it had a, a wider wheelbase. So I was, you know, surprised to see that. But we also have some storage underneath the rear floor with some foam padding and stuff like that. And again, really goes well with what Priuses were always known for, which was, you know, that more elongated hatchback design. So overall, lots of space, uh, really good styling, massive rear window, and overall just a great looking car from the back. Okay, so looking at the interior of the new Prius, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't do any research above, you know, before getting into this car. And there's a lot of first impressions I have here. Overall, the first thing that I noticed is it seems very clean and kind of gives me like a, a smart vibe, if that makes any sense. It's like a business smart outfit. It's, you know, not over the top. It seems to be well organized and laid out. Um, and I, you know, once you start to pay attention to some details, there are some cool details in here. One of them is it has a Lexus shifter, which is uh, right out of, you know, what we saw with the LC, the UX, the RX, the NX, all of the new lineup, all the hybrids have this new shifter and it seems to be right out of the Lexus, which is nice to see. Um, also, when I got into the car, I noticed the door chime is different now. I know that's a little detail, but it doesn't sound like the normal Toyota Bing. It's a little more calming, I guess you could say. So yeah, that's, that's an interesting detail. The steering wheel itself looks different. So it seems a bit smaller than I was expecting. And also the layout of the controls on it are almost like these little panels to the left and right of it. Um, they, they're, it's different than any other Toyota or Lexus I've gotten into. So, you know, I, I recognize all the same logos. They're just in different spots. They're laid out quite nicely. Um, it must be a way to eliminate having to, to touch anything anywhere else, which is kind of nice. And the volume has kind of like a switch instead of the buttons, which is nice. Also, the cluster is now a screen kind of up and above the steering wheel. So instead of looking through the steering wheel gap, like we all do in a normal car to check our speeds and stuff like that, it's actually above the steering wheel. So when you look at it, your eyes are only varying from the road a very small amount, which is really smart. I think that's something cars probably should have done years ago because of, you know, it just seems to make more sense to have it. It's almost like its own heads up display instead of being like in the cavity of a dash. Now, I will say, I think some car companies in the past had problems with reflections from sunlight on bright days, stuff like that. I don't know how this would do. I haven't driven it in the sun, but you know, uh, I'm sure they thought of that. If not, just get the windows tinted. Because of that, we have some interesting angles here on the steering wheel. For instance, the steering wheel seems to kind of angle upwards on this center, and it actually gives it a little bit different shape when you steer, I noticed. And that's because you don't have to look through this gap anymore. You're looking over the steering wheel, which is uh, which is something. We also have a little ambient lighting here. We got this little light strip from left to right and continues on the left of the steering wheel here. It's cute, it's, it's something. I don't think it's gonna like show you, you know, the inside of the, the cabin by any means, but it does you know, give you some, some contours and, and that sort of thing. We have switches for climate controls and heated seats all right here. And I notice even the dome light's a little bit different. So the dome light is kind of artsy. It, instead of shining light down or at you, it's kind of dissipating the light with some shapes, kind of gives you like a Swarovski like crystal vibe. And uh, that is controlled by you know, some buttons here that you just kind of touch touch um, almost like almost like a, a textured plastic. And speaking of textured plastic, there's a lot of it here. It is, it is injection molding, so a lot of stuff is, you know, soft to touch, but that part reminds me of, of previous Priuses. The fact of the materials of the inside are still that plasticky because of, if you remember from, you know, when hybrids first came out, they're all meant for the best fuel economy, and that means lighter materials so that you can have a lighter vehicle so that you can have better fuel economy. So that is one thing that I did notice. And it even smelt like previous generation Priuses, which is funny because I get in and out of new cars every day for my job. And when I got in this, I said uh, to the gentleman standing beside me, it smells like a Prius. And I think that's exactly right. And that's, that's probably the materials that they use for it. Now, it's time for the next Easter egg. In the center here, we have two cup holders and past the cup holders, 
we have this little shelf. And in this little shelf, there's this little, this little switch that has an arrow. And, and if you click that, it actually removes out and inside there is a hidden compartment. And in that hidden compartment, there is some writing on the plastic and it says hashtag hidden compartment. And I find that so hilarious. And I think it goes well with the demographic of the people buying these cars. Uh, fun, you know, just, just a fun thing. I like it, I think it's cool. So that's that. In the higher models, I think the wireless charging is right here. And I remember seeing online that instead of a flat pad for your phone, it you put your phone in sideways, which is kind of cool. We also have some drive mode switches here. Up, down gives you cycles through Eco Sport. And then we have the EV mode uh, to make it, you know, you, you're not gonna drive high speeds on EV mode, but pulling it in and out of your garage, slow speeds, stuff like that, you can override it and try to favor the, uh, the EV mode while you can. If you have the, the AC cranked and stuff like that, in my, uh, in my experience, it'll kick it off, but it is there. We have a very small uh, glove box in the center or center council box with two USB-C, uh, probably quick chargers in there, which is nice. So you can just plug your phone in there. And we also have a couple USBs at the front as well. Uh, other than that, you know, the only other thing to, to point out is we have the word Prius here underneath the screen, which the screen is just the same as any of the others in the Toyota and Lexus lineup. And there's that, when I hit the button, I hear the new Bing again. Instead of the beep, it's that new Bing, which is nice. And I like it. And even the screen up there that you're gonna look at all the time is pretty HD. I think it looks really good. You know, it's got a black background, so probably that's to get rid of the glare. And overall, it looks really decent quality. So I am happy with that. To the left of the steering wheel, all that's really over there is heated steering wheel, the heated windshield wiper area to, to de-ice them, and the auto high beams. Um, on the door panels, nothing super, super exciting to write home about. Again, just that really light plastic, normal door handle like you've seen in other stuff. And same with even the switches for the power is uh, just kind of what you would expect from an economy car that is supposed to be just really good on gas. Okay, so in the back seat of the new Prius, I was expecting it to be quite spacious, and for the most part it is. I have good leg room. I am about six foot one, don't forget. Uh, for a small economy car, I do have decent leg room. It is quite spacious this way, like in terms of like, there's not much humps and stuff like that. However, I did notice one thing. So the model that we're sitting in right now is the one without any sort of sunroof. And if I'm to sit up perfectly straight, I do feel my hair touching the roof a little bit. And also, if I kind of move my head to the left, I can feel it touching the side here. Again, this is not an SUV. It's not supposed to have a huge backseat space. Uh, legroom is great, just a little bit of headroom. I don't know if having the sunroof would help that or not, but it is something to mention. But other than that, we have a nice armrest back here with the cup holders. We have a couple USB-C charging ports and even the dome light back here it's still kind of like that crystally type, you know, like we saw in the front seat. So overall, not too bad, but as a guy my height, my head is just touching just a little bit. So I wouldn't want to like drive, you know, 20 hours in the back seat here. I probably might get a little claustrophobic, but overall pretty good. Okay, so inside the UX 250H, the cabin is quite nice. So we do have a lot more going on here. The, the dashboard actually goes up a little bit higher than you know first expected, but overall, lot to go over. So the first thing to touch on is the shifter. I find the shifter in the UX is very similar to the shifter in the, the ES, and it's super comfortable. What I mean by that is when you put your hand on it and you squeeze it, you're kind of squeezing it with your thumb, and it's like the perfect shape for your thumb. It's, it just, it seems satisfying to use, and I know it's silly because it's a shifter, I remember reading years ago that Lexus and Toyota both think of even people with conditions like carpal tunnel when designing shift knobs. And you know, this I feel like with any type of condition, whether it was like, you know, tennis elbow or you know, carpal tunnel, any of those things, you'd still be able to put it in gear from what I can feel anyway, because it doesn't take much effort and it's quite comfortable to use. We did see some changes here. So in the 2023, we don't have the control panel like we used to have on the other UXs in previous years. Instead, where that was, we have the heated and cooled seats with the heated steering wheel and some really nice 
just paneling. Um, I can't really tell the material. It's just like a hard plastic with a little bit of matte finish to it uh, because now everything else is controlled on the screen by touch. We also have a little phone holder here, which is where the wireless charging pad is, a couple USB-Cs, and overall, the material is very impressive for a car of this price point. Everything's you know soft touch, even the dashboard has a little Easter egg to it in the UX, and that is, it's made out of material similar to, it's, it's supposed to replicate kind of the origami paper, and the reason that's important is Lexus has this you know, homage of origami. And what it is, is it takes a Takumi, which is a master craftsman, in the Lexus factory, in the Lexus manufacturing world, to pass a test regarding origami, uh, to be able to, to, to be that position, of, and that honor of a job that it is. And that is to make an, or an origami catch with your less dominant hand in less than three seconds or 10 seconds, something like that. So the paper on the dashboard in the luxury package UX is to pay homage to that. And it looks cool. It just looks cool. There's a lot of depth to it. It's not just like a boring, you know, dashboard, uh, which is really cool. Okay, the rest of the interior. Again, we have some nice high-end materials, aluminums, uh, some matte black finishes. Even, it's almost like on the the switch panel here, it's like a, it's like a brushed aluminum, but black is what it looks like to me. So. Really nice, it captures the light quite well. Up here we have our drive control switches. So again, as you have 10 and two, you can switch it to normal eco and sport without you know, having to look away from the road, which is really important. Um, other than that, you know, similar string wheel to other Lexuses. We also have you know, a decent amount of buttons on there, pretty much the same buttons we saw on the Prius, but just in a different order. And uh, again, switches that are similar to you know, any other Lexus. So the climate control and things of that nature. We do have the center console that opens both ways. So it doesn't matter if you're the passenger or the driver, you can open that from both sides. Decent amount of storage there. And overall, like I said, just good space, high-end materials in the inside of the UX, especially for a vehicle of this size. It feels bigger when you're the driver uh, in terms of space, which is really nice. One more really cool thing that I haven't seen, not only in any other Lexus, but in any other car in general, is when you turn on the vehicle, depending on the package, you have like a little ambient lighting there on the actual uh, switch. I guess you can call it like the dial here for the vents. That actually lights up on certain packages, which is really cool. We still have a volume knob up here by the radio. So yeah, overall, a little bit more luxurious, a little bit more classy interior, especially at this price point. Okay, so I'm sitting in the back of the UX250H and it's pretty much the exact opposite of the Prius. What I mean by that is the seat is right up against my legs. And this is something that, you know, from looking at pictures online, it's hard to tell how small this back seat space is. I'm 6'1", it would be a little tight for me. Now, I set up this seat in front of me for being myself. So could I sit behind myself? Yes, especially if it's a short trip, no problem at all, but it's a little bit on the tighter side. However, the headroom is a lot better. So I have more headspace. I'm pretty comfortable head-wise, especially versus the Prius. I, I'm not touching, you know, in any way like that. Um, it's just it's just the seats. And actually, you can even see the space between the seats. It's pretty obvious, okay? We do have some USB seats down here and some vents, which is nice for being such a small back seat. We still have some climate control coming our way. Everything else in the back seat kind of just goes in tone with the front. The door handles, the brushed aluminum style plates, and we still have, you know, just the armrest with a couple cup holders. Nothing too crazy back here. This is definitely designed to be a car that is mostly focused on the people in the front uh, because it's like a commuter car, I guess you could say. So not necessarily designed to have a whole lot of stuff going on in the back seat. So overall, it's, it is what it is, you know? So in summary, we have two vehicles that have some similarities, but some differences. The new Prius has around 196 horsepower with the UX cousin in the 180 range. Fuel economy wise, we have six liters per 100,000 kilometers on the UX combined and an astonishing 4.8 on the Prius. So even though very similar powertrains, this one does have better fuel economy. And I'm sure a lot of that is the shape of the vehicle, the materials used inside, all of those things to just get better fuel economy, where the UX, a little bit taller, a little bit wider, sacrifice a little bit of that rear seat space, but you know, 
it still has some nicer materials, a little bit heavier door, stuff like that. In fact, one of my staff, who's been with Lexus for a long time, I'll never forget one of the first times he drove the UX, he called me from the car to say he wanted to buy one because of he felt the ride was so smooth and quiet. And that's exactly what the UX is set out to do, where the Prius on the other head was more about that fuel economy. So the question is, which one is right for you? Well, their price point wise isn't too big of a difference. We have the Prius starting around 40,000 in Canada, going up to 45 for the fully loaded and the UX starting around 45 and going up to 50,000 for you know the more equipped fully loaded one. So which one is right for you? I would say if you favor, you know, the latest styling, something that looks really trendy and cool and quirky and has the best fuel economy and a little bit bigger rear seat space and trunk space, definitely the Prius is what's for you. And don't forget in the late 90s, there were so many celebrities driving Prius. It was really cool. It was like the enviro friendly car and it was, uh, it was made famous that way. The UX on the other hand is gonna be a commuter car for someone that still wants a little bit of class, a little bit of elegance and a little bit stronger and better, you know, ride quality and materials and stuff like that. But either way, let me know in the comments which one is right for you. Remember to subscribe so you can see more of our video content. And if you wanna see a more in-depth look at things like the Prius and some of our Toyota products, go to our cousin or sister YouTube channel called Performance Toyota, and you can see a little bit more stuff down that right. I'm Dustin Mason, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.